So you've been to the field, you've collected your representative soil sample and brought them back to the lab. Now what do you do with it? So a common preparation for many sample analysis is air drying and then sieving, crushing, or grinding the sample. This is appropriate for nutrient analysis, metals, organic matter, salinity, pH, basically anything that is not going to change with moisture content. So hopefully you've kept your samples um, either cold or open to the air and as soon as possible you want to start air drying them to stop any chemical changes. So prepare a clean surface or tray that you can lay out your samples in and just dump out the sample into the tray, spread it out in a fairly thin layer, lay your trays out in a cool dry place where there won't be any cross contamination and how long it takes to air dry can vary depending on your sample and how moist it is. It might be a few days, it could be over a week. So keep checking back until you feel sure that your sample is totally dry. And again, you don't want to try and speed that process up with ovens, but just leave it out um, on air temperature. So after you're satisfied that it is fully air dry, here's some samples that are already dry, you want to crush and to sieve it. There are several options. You can use something mechanical like a Wiley mill to crush the sample, or you can also hand sieve. So we're going to do hand sieving today. Before you put it through the sieve, you want to break up your sample a bit. So pour out your sample onto a piece of clean brown paper or a clean surface. And then you want to break up any large chunks or sections. You can do that with a rolling pin. You can also use a piece of plastic pipe. If you have a really stubborn sample, maybe there was a lot of clay or it's very hard after it dries, you might have to use a little bit more force and use something like a mallet to break up some of those larger chunks. The sieve has a bottom part to catch the sieved material and you need to select the proper mesh size for the top. This is a two millimeter mesh, so each of the holes is exactly two millimeters. You want to treat these kindly and not poke them so that you don't change the size of the holes. After your sample is broken up, you just want to put it into the top of the sieve and pour your sample into the sieve. And give it a shake. So any material that is smaller than two millimeters should go through through and be caught in the bottom of the sieve. The coarser fragments will stay on top. And you might want to save those coarse fragments and weigh them if that would be a relevant measure for you. So you can see the larger rocks and roots left on top. If there's still any chunks of soil, you may want to pour out that top portion and crush it further and then sieve again. And in the bottom of the sieve is all the finer material that we'll keep for further analysis. You want to store your samples in a cool, dry place. So you can store it in plastic or in paper. And before you do any other analysis, you want to keep in mind some of the standard measures that you might want to do on your soil. So perhaps pH, you might want to do a moisture determination, so that means you would have needed to keep some of your moist sample. And those might be important in determining the type of analysis or procedures you do later on. And of course, before you store it, you want to make sure that your sample is clearly labeled. 